Oglethorpe was the man that the British Crown sent over to establish a colony here. Thank you, see you later. Thank you. <laughs> Not sure I'm gonna get in. There were done edgeways with that cicada up in the tree there. Howling away. Good morning from Savannah, Georgia. We're just getting up and leaving the bed and breakfast we're staying at here, which is this one here. It is absolutely sensational, the breakfast. Let me show you quickly the breakfast. It was magic. It's called the Catherine Ward House. It's an old historic house here in Savannah's downtown area. This is not like a promotion or anything. I just love this place. We booked it on, uh, I think it was booking.com. It is gorgeous. Uh, anyway, and it's right next to, like literally right next to the main park, one of the most famous parks here in Savannah, which is Forsyth Park. And it's right, literally one block in front of us. They are. Looking lovely today. Thank you. With your strawberry I top. Up like that. Should be peaches, <laughs> but it's nice. Oh yeah, I don't have peaches. It's like food here. Hello, oh, right. <laughs> Last night in the bed and breakfast I had enough time to kind of sit down and think about this place and read about the history which you know obviously not all of it was good and not that long ago. There's also some really interesting stuff as well and also the fact that you know wandering through the city you see so many Scottish names. McGregor's, McCallum's and McDonald's and all the rest of it. I was thinking about the, the Scots who would have came here with the first British contingent who arrived here. It's fascinating. So I think we're going to do some tours today if we can. And this right here behind me is the centerpiece and main attraction of Forsyth Park. This beautiful water feature and fountain. It is gorgeous. It looks like it's been here for a very long time. I'll need to put on the screen exactly how long. But it's a very, very cool sight in the middle of this park. I like it a lot. What do you think? Beautiful. I really love the trees. The trees in this park. The live oaks with the Spanish moss. It's so unique, I've never seen anything like it. Maybe in Charleston a little bit. Yeah. It's very, very pretty. Onwards. I find it so cool and interesting that they have oysters built into the concrete in the floor here. There's definitely something about that. There must be a story behind that. I don't know what it is. Or maybe it was just a cheap way to bulk out the concrete because they had loads of oyster shells. I don't know. It's interesting. One thing I'll notice about Savannah when you come here is it's full of squares. There are squares everywhere. 
And this one here behind me is notorious. This is Calhoun Square. And this square kind of signifies the dark side of Savannah's history. And we have to be talking about slavery here. Way back when this city was formed and built, the city didn't actually extend this far. This was at the end of the, the city limits, really. And when, when the slaves died, they never had, they weren't allowed to be buried in the same place that the, the masters were, were buried. So they dumped them in mass graves here. And there are thought to be over a thousand enslaved people who are buried in this square, square right here behind me. And they know this because when they've done like gas works in the street and dug it up and found pipe work and stuff underneath, they've also like unearthed skeletons from underneath. And that is a kind of dark history that marks a lot of the South really. There are stories like this everywhere and it cannot be forgotten when you come to places like this. These cities were often built on the backs of enslaved people. And this square here, Calhoun Square, in particular because they know that there were mass graves here of at least a thousand people and then second of all it's named after Calhoun. Controversially Calhoun himself was voted one of the most popular senators of all time in America but he has this history of being pro-slavery which is quite um, ironic considering where the square was named after him, this place. After all we know that you know thousands of enslaved people were buried here in mass graves. The house here at the end though was built by Mr. Wilson 1830s, I think, 1850s, sometime in the 1800s. 18 something, all right? It is known as one of the most haunted houses in all of Savannah, but controversially so, because the tale of its haunting surrounds the fact that the man who built it killed his two young daughters in the house. But most historians say that did not happen, that his two daughters actually lived long lives and they died in different states even, nowhere near their father. So, yeah, I guess we could take that one with a pinch of salt and maybe it is more for the tourists but it's a beautiful old house and there are a lot of beautiful old houses in this place and actually one of the things that makes this square well known is the fact that all the houses you see around the square are original in their original state which is not like many of the other squares around the city so there's that anyway gorgeous place with a really interesting deep and dark history there's also a school over there called the massey school which is historic in itself Massey is another Scottish name, by the way. Just thought I'd throw that out there. Anyway, let's get ourselves down to the water where it's a bit cooler, hopefully. I don't know, I really like liked Charleston a lot, but I think here might edge it for me. No, what do you think? Charleston or Savannah? Hard to say. Yeah. Yeah. Not been here enough, long enough yet. Oh yeah. He's doing it so slowly and carefully. Okay, so this here is Oglethorpe Square. Oglethorpe was the man that the British Crown sent over to establish a colony here and it was Oglethorpe himself that came here and founded this city and this is a square that's named after him. us on River Street in the main tourist food fair. Yeah, right there is Savannah's famous waving girl statue. Tattoo. Tattoo statue. <laughs> yeah. Too hot to think at this point. The waving girl statue is a tribute to Florence Martus who from 1887 to 1931 greeted ships entering Savannah by waving a cloth, apparently looking for a long lost lover. Ships have sounded their horns in this area ever since. It was well too hot to stay under the Savannah sun for much longer, so we took shelter from here on, took a nap and then headed back out to chase some ghosts. And you'll see that in the next episode. Thanks for watching!